Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a responsive five column showcase layout with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So, without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so we are going to start our design by creating a brand new page. So, I'm going to come over here to Pages, click on Add New. Then, I'm just going to give this page a title and click on Use the Divi Builder. Next, you want to click on Use Visual Builder. And this time, we are going to choose a pre-made layout as our starting point. So I'm going to click here. And the pre-made layout we're looking for here is the architectural pre-made layout. So I'm going to click here on Art and Design just to narrow these down. And it is right here. The one we need is the home. So I'm going to select it and then click on Use this layout. Okay, so now our layout has been loaded onto our page. The next thing we want to do is to come to this second section and duplicate it. So I'm going to come over here to this little button and then just click it. So the reason why we're doing this is we need to create the uh, section title. Right, so the next thing we're going to do here is to delete these blurbs. So I'm just going to click here and then I'm going to add my single row with one column. I'm just going to close this for now and then scroll all the way down. And this is the text we need to copy. So what we need to do here is to copy this left uh, module. So I'm going to right click, copy module, and then come back here to the top. And then I'm going to paste it. Right, so because here we just need the title, I need to go in and delete all this other text. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon. And then I'm just going to highlight all this text that I don't need and then just delete it. Great, so I'm just going to save this for now. So this is now where we need to customize these columns to make them five. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to this little icon, which allows us to change our column structure. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to go for my five columns. So I'm going to come over here, click that. Next, we're going to come over here to the first blurb and delete that image. So I'm going to click here on the module settings, image and icon, and then I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Next, I'm going to save this and then we're going to duplicate this. Right, so the next stage is I'm going to go into this top uh, blurb module and delete the contents. Next, we're going to add a background image. So I'm going to come over here to background, click this plus button. In fact, we need the third tab because this is where we add the image. So I'm going to click here, click this plus button, and then I'm going to add my image. Click upload an image. So as you can see, the text here is not uh, easy to read on this background. So what we need to do is to add a gradient. So I'm going to come over here to the second tab, click the plus button, and we're going to add our first gradient here. Now the gradient I'm going to use here is has an uh, has transparency to it. So I need to drag this third, I mean this second slider, so that we can get the RGBA values. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paste my value between the brackets, just like that. And by the way, if you want to use the same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link in the show notes below. Okay, so now it's time to add my second color. So I'm going to come over here. And uh, again, this is an RGBA value. And then I'm going to paste between the brackets, just like that. So right now, as you can see, nothing has happened. So the next stage now is to place this gradient above the image. So to do that, we just need to come uh, over here to the bottom and then switch this button on. Okay, so that's much better now. Now it's not, it's time to make more changes on the design tab. So I'm going to come over here, click on the tab. So we're going to go to the text title. So I'm going to come over here and we're going to change the size to 2.7 VW. Next for the letter spacing, I'm going to set this to minus three. So over here, we need to set our sizes for the tablet and the smartphone. So I'm going to click on this little icon right here. And then I'm going to click on the tablet tab. And we're going to set this to 46 pixels. And for the smartphone, we're going to set it at 36. Next, we need to add our custom margins. So I'm going to scroll down, go to spacing. And for our custom margin here, we need to set it to 1.5 VW to the left and 1.5 VW to the right. So I'm going to activate this chain because what happens is when I add my value over here, it's automatically added on to the other side, which is great. And I've noticed here that I'm still on my tablet view. So I'm just going to click this icon here to go into my desktop view. Right. So the next stage now is to add our custom padding. So I'm going to add my custom padding to the top and to the bottom. But this time for the bottom, it's going to be 2VW. 
And then for the left and the right, it's going to be 1VW. So here, depending on the size of your monitor, you can also adjust the size here to uh, make it fit a little bit. So you can go down to maybe 1.7 if you want, but I'm going to make these finer adjustments uh, towards the end of the tutorial. All right, so with this set, I'm going to go ahead now and save. Now we need to customize the bottom blurb, so I'm going to go into the blurb settings. And then we need to first adjust the, uh, the body text. So I'm going to click here on this little uh, brush tool. So for the body text alignment, this needs to be aligned to the left. So I'm going to click here. Next, we're going to add our, our text color. So I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool. And I'm going to paste my color. And this time, this is going to be a normal hexadecimal color. Like that. Next, it's time to add our custom padding. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. And um, I'm going to add two VW both to the top and the bottom. So click your chain to activate it so that when you add your value over here, it's automatically added to the bottom. Great. So moving on, we need to also do this to the left and the right. And also here, uh, this title, we don't really need it because we have it here on the top. So let's go ahead and get rid of it. So I'm going to come back here to the content text and then remove this commercial design. Great. So now with that, I'm going to go ahead now with save. So now that we have one of the blurbs designed, the next stage is to copy this blurb here and paste it over here to the remaining spaces. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to hold down my command key and select the top part of the blurb, scroll down and then select the second part, just like that. So now that these two are selected, I'm just going to right click, copy modules, and then I'm going to paste them over here. So just make sure that you paste them so that they, they fill these columns. Great. So now that we have everything all set, the next stage now is to customize the section settings. So let's go over here to this gear icon to access the section settings. So we're going to start off with the background and give this a background color. So the color we're going to make this is white. So I'm going to go ahead and add my white background. Next, we're going to go to the custom padding. So I'm going to click here on the design tab, spacing. We're going to add 5VW to the bottom. And then we're going to get rid of these values that we have here by default. Right, so the next stage now is to add our box shadow. So I'm going to come over here to box shadow. And we're going to go with this one right here. So let's come over here to our vertical position and add minus 200. The box shadow blur strength, uh, this needs to be kept at zero. And then next we need to add our shadow color. So I'm going to come over here and our color is going to be solid. So I'm just going to paste it in here. Now, by default, sometimes it's set to a transparency color. So all you need to do to get rid of the uh, transparency is to just drag the slider all the way up to the top. Okay, so I'm going to paste my value in here and then save. Now, the next stage now is to customize our row settings. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to my row settings icon. So for the background here, we're going to add a white color. We'll select it. And then we're going to go into the design tab. Click on alignment. So we need to make sure that our alignment is set to centered. Right, so the next stage here is to go to the sizing. And uh, we need to uh, set our custom width. So make sure that use custom width is set to yes, change the unit to percentage, and this needs to be set at 89%. And then the gutter width is the space between these columns. So we need to go in and adjust that. So I'm going to click here on use custom gutter width, and we're going to set this to one just to reduce that space. So as you can see, these are much closer together. Great. So now we need to go in and add our custom margin. So let's go over here to spacing. Right, so let's start with our margin top. So I'm going to set it to minus 10 VW. Next, it's the padding. So I'm going to start here with the padding top and bottom. So I'm going to activate my chain icon and paste my value in here. And this is supposed to be 3 VW. So sometimes you may want to go in and uh, just retype it again because uh, it defaults to pixels. I'm not sure if that's a bug. Okay, so uh, the next stage now is to add... 1.5 to the left and the right. So I'm going to activate my chain again. I'll paste it in here. 
We're going to go to our box shadow. So this time I'm going to go with this one right here. And notice that as soon as I've selected it, it has applied this beautiful shadow on the left and the right. So for the blur strength, we're going to set this to 80%. So at this point, the design structure is complete. So let me just save this and let me show you what it looks like so far. Okay, so now it's time to add the final touches. Right, so the next stage now is to add our section divider style. So I'm gonna come over here to section settings, click on design, dividers. So the style we need here needs to be on the top divider. So I'm gonna make sure that this is selected. Click down this drop down to choose our divider style. And the one I'm going to go with is this one right here. So I'm going to select it. Next, we're going to come over here to our divider heights. We're going to set this to 70 VW. We're going to flip it. And then we're going to add our color. So the color here is just a transparent, a transparent color. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag the slider until I'm happy with the design. So I think I'll just go a little bit lower. Right. I think I'm happy with that. So let's take a look. So you can see now this is really stylish and this divider that we've used also works with the straight edges that we have in the building. Great, so pretty much this is our design. I'm gonna go ahead now and save and then I'm gonna publish the page. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. And if you have any questions regarding this tutorial, please leave your questions in the comments box below and I'll do my best to respond to them. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.